Second Row Shadows Die Twice is the hardest game I've ever played, but I'm glad I did. Let me tell you why in this spoiler-free review, to see if it'll be a game for you or not. Sekiro will not be for those looking for an easy time. After all, it falls into the subgenre of a Souls-like game. For those of you who might not know what I'm referring to, this terminology comes from the creators from Software, the company responsible for the creations of the Dark Souls series, Bloodborne, and probably the biggest title you may recognize, Elden Ring. These kinds of games are known for their brutality, having minimal healing, no navigational assistance on where to go, dark fantasy environments, and of course, the boss fights. Boss fights that can take you hours to figure out or simply leave the player walking away from the game entirely. So what makes these games appealing? Because the pure challenge of it, and once you prevail in a boss fight, it's extremely satisfying. A rush, really. Partially of relief and partially with excitement to reach the next area, to see who the next boss is that lies ahead. On top of all that, the bragging rights. Not everyone will be able to say they beat Sekiro. This video took me so long to put together because of how much perseverance I had to muster just to make it to the end and somehow beat it. In fact, I had over 350 deaths when finishing this. I'd be lying to you if I were to say I didn't walk away from this game for at least a month at one point because I was so pissed. For those who have played this game and are curious, it was because of this guy. Hey, if you know, you know. But I'm so glad I managed to go back and accomplish beating my first Souls-like experience with Sekiro Shadows Dying Twice. Sekiro follows the shinobi known as the Wolf. He seeks revenge on a samurai clan that has captured his lord. I've played a lot of games throughout the years. I particularly wouldn't say this was an amazing story, but it did make for a great revenge plot tale. Where I have come to learn there are four possible endings for Sekiro, which makes me glad to know, even though this wasn't one of the best stories I've ever played, I do admit I'd be curious to see what the other three endings look like. One of the things I did that I think made it a better experience was playing it in the native language of Japanese. You could sense the passion in the voice acting when lines were delivered. I feel like it made it more immersive and helped with the atmosphere. Of course, that could just be me and my nerdy side as I do watch quite a bit of foreign films a tad of anime and it wasn't really an issue for me. That's just my opinion. If that's not your thing, do not fear. English is still an option to go with. Sekiro takes place in a fictionalized Japan during the Sengoku period and makes strong references to Buddhist mythology and philosophy. It leads to having one of the most bizarre yet fascinating worlds I've ever played in a video game. It's dark, but weirdly enough, kinda has a beauty to it with how visually pleasing it is on the eyes. This game isn't exactly open world, I would describe it more as a narrative with some leniency on roaming, but the way you go about exploring or going from place to place is like small regions, fascinating areas that have unique enemies specific to those areas. You could stumble into mini bosses, some optional, others, <laughs> no. There is idols you can discover which are much needed to recharge your health and act as fast travel points too. I think the way it was designed was well done. It's not too big where some players get bored with too much empty space, nor was it too small and narrow where there was nothing to do but continue forward with just the story. It was a nice balance, which can be hard to accomplish, so I give From Software props on managing that so very well. In the game, you lose your arm and are fitted with a prosthetic, which leads to some cool opportunities where in the world you may discover arm upgrades that give you access to awesome gadgets to use. 
Gadgets like an umbrella shield, a shuriken launcher, a loaded axe, and lots of other cool stuff too. To use these gadgets, it will cost spirit emblems. So I advise taking a closer look on how much it costs to activate the gadget each time, because they can go quickly. But to recharge them, all you have to do is visit an idol and rest. There is even an upgrade tree. You could look at investing in upgrading those gadgets if you have the right materials and coins. As for the normal skill tree, there are three sections of it that you know about to begin with, but there is a total of five. The other two, you will have to unlock. They offer some really cool options within them, but to save you from the headache I first had when starting. When you get a chance, it is a must have on getting the Makiri counter skill. It's probably the most important skill to get from the tree, as you'll use it religiously throughout the game. There is a nice little practice zone in the starting area even. I vitalized this, because for me it was a bit tricky to get down at first, so I needed some extra reps, which I was thankful for. It's a great way to practice other moves you may be shaky on as well, without risking it out in the world where there could be consequences. So trust me on this, look for that Makiri counter skill. This is probably the best combat design I've ever experienced. There is a stealth element in the game tying to a little bit of the combat. However, once you're in the mix, the rhythm of fights, the pacing, the precision of them, it's magnificent. It's a steep learning curve at first. The fun is the journey itself. Sure, you're going to get frustrated as it's probably inevitable unless you are the coolest and most collected person on planet Earth. Though once that moment clicks for you, that is where the real fun begins. Learning, getting it, being able to beat the bosses. Sekiro does have a really unique but cool element when you die. You can choose to resurrect yourself for a second chance of getting immediately back into the action. You will want to use this strategically, however, as this element does have a side effect tying to the story, which I won't elaborate on too much but if you constantly die, it can have a negative impact on the people of the world. I know it sounds vague, but I don't want to divulge too much. Talking about how my experience with a certain boss fight was driving me crazy. One of the mistakes I made was focusing on the wrong meter. I was too busy looking at the left towards the health bar, rather than the posture meter dead center. Eventually it clicked for me, to focus on breaking the posture meter, to get death blows on bosses rather than worry about the health bar. If you manage to do that, it will greatly help your mental health and lower your wariness. Too bad I didn't figure that out until the end of the game. <laughs> Joke's on you. I'm really glad I gave this one a try. It had been one game I had been hesitant on for a few years, just sitting there in my game library, where I told myself, eh, Maybe one day. Sure, it really did give me an ass kicking, but like I said, once that moment clicks for you on combat, it becomes such a fun experience. Brutal, but fun. After all, many players and critics out there will say Sekiro is one of the hardest games ever made. Now you wanna talk about the bragging rights factor, but I won't. It does make me curious to see what the other Souls-like games are about and how they play. If you do want a well-made, challenging game, I'd recommend giving Sekiro a try. It so happens to have won the Game of the Year in 2019 and went on to win a bunch of other awards too. It may surprise you like it did me. Eventually, I may come back and see about those other achievements I missed out on on my first playthrough and those other endings but I'm gonna need some time to mentally recover before then. If you've played Sekiro, what was your experience like? Or if you haven't, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments your takes. But most importantly, remember to take care of yourself. Have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next video.